Uganda is a reproductive health champion and has shown firm commitment to increase access to reproductive health supplies and reducing unmet need for family planning. The Reproductive Health Supplies Coalition a consultative meeting engaging a wide variety of actors such as policymakers, service providers, program managers, civil society advocates, those responsible for selecting, procuring and ensuring quality of reproductive health medicines convened at Imperial Hotel in Kampala on the 15th of April. Many of us are doing very good work, but are we having a common, are we moving together so that we have impact? And there are three main specific um, objectives. We want to ensure a common understanding of the RH supplies commitments. When you talk of FP 2020, when you talk of UN Commission, every initiative, can we all speak with the same language? We are going to find out in brief organizations that are really working towards achieving the commitments and the gaps and those that really have the capacity and need resources so that by the time we leave, we know the commitments, we know who is doing what, we know who has capacity and lacks resources. The day's agenda, among others, was to accelerate progress towards achieving reproductive health supplies commitment in Uganda. By moving forward on a common agenda and ensuring common understanding of the reproductive health supplies commitments that have been made in Uganda over the past five years. We felt that by organizing this meeting in this very crowded family planning and reproductive health space that we are all living in is very much a focusing on the gaps, focusing on some of the barriers that we may be able to overcome together, and focusing on where Uganda needs extra support. I will do a table round and um, we can just hear a couple of the expectations. I will be noting them down and then we can make sure that as the day progresses, um, we try and meet people's expectation of the day. Uh, my expectation for this meeting is to understand how the coalition actually executes its work in improving uh, the RIH supplies in the country. And two, if this meeting can actually um, interpret the global target of reaching the 120 million women with, uh, uh, with the RIH supplies, can we interpret that to Uganda specific? It's my hope that if from this meeting probably we can come up with that, because we've always wished we could do that. We are all saying global, global, but what is Uganda's target? My expectation is uh, to get to understand why some of the current strategies are not working to address uh, supplies issues in the country. I'm interested in hearing something on how do we translate the achievements at national level to service delivery points. My expectation is to see how as coordinated partners we can move towards ensuring that these commitments become tangible outcomes for the country. My expectation is actually to see how we can develop uh, a tracking system to link supplies to utilization and uh, to develop empirical uh, basis for future forecasting. My expectations for this meeting uh, is to explore opportunities for closing supply gaps and understanding the real supply gaps. Uh, well, for my uh, understanding from this meeting, I think it will be good if we can have clarity in the roles and responsibilities of developing, development partners that how do we address the reproductive health communities in the long run. Thank you. My expectation uh, is to how we can unpack the commitments. This meeting is important to us because it makes us reflect on our commitments in London in July 2012 when we started the family planning movement as a global community. Uh, governments, development partners, donors, civil society made lots of commitments. UNFP itself made commitments. We said we would elevate the leadership of family planning to the highest the topmost leadership of our agency. We committed to reprogram our resources so that we put aside 25% of our program resources towards family planning. The government of Uganda made uh, commitments. It committed to increasing budget allocation to uh, contraceptives. All these have been attained within one year. 
and we are so happy to take stock of what we committed and what we've achieved. That's why we, uh, we find this meeting quite important. Today, what we are hearing is the fact that we need to work more downstream. We need to make sure that we understand better why is it that women still don't access family planning and sometimes the, the commodities are even expiring either the national level or somewhere in the stores in the system. So we need to understand exactly what the barriers are. We also need to make sure that we work with everybody. We need to work with the education. People should know right from school. We need to work with the gender. Some of these products have gender issues here. Women need to be to consult their husbands, husbands are against them, you know. The community is saying something else and the health is saying something else. We need to make sure that we can actually unpack and communicate and make them fit their beliefs and myths. So we have a big job to do on the demand side. Uganda has a, a, a very high unmet need for family planning of 34%. What this means is that uh, you have out there uh, women who would like to use family planning uh, but do not have access, they are not using. And there must be a reason why they are not doing. Some of, some of it is affordability, some of it is that it's not just accessible. So the, we people who are involved in this field must make sure that we solve this problem for the women. What matters is that the woman out there in the remotest part of, of Uganda, if they want to use voluntary family planning, they should be able to access the supplies and that is the job that we have to do. It's high time that we get into innovations and uh, especially on information technology. I think a lot needs to be done, like for uh, 13 life-saving drugs that we have been talking about since morning. It's important to track them and find out when are they are uh, in stockouts in the health centers. How do we track that? So UNICEF uh, in the innovations through MTRAC can, can find out about the stockout of drugs. So we have to improve and put in more money for information technology and to bring all these innovations together that are really going to bring change and really going to decrease the time span for the achievements that we are going to get in two years' time, maybe we'll get in three months or six months. So we are working towards that as UNICEF and trying to contribute to, uh, to the UN Commission for Life-Saving Commodities. As one of the persons who participated in the initial formulation of these commitments, I'm happy to see that it is now a national agenda, something which we began within a boardroom. We have been able to see a number of stakeholders, a number of partners from the global level. You see now the Reproductive Health Supplies Coalition is here and they are able to support us on something that we began as a country and a few members. We see members of parliament, they have owned up these commitments. Already we saw the president taking lead, so I think it was not an effort which was wasted. The commitments have helped us and as an individual, I'm happy with the progress that is moving on and I think the future is bright for us. <laughs> We ask people to list their top 10 priorities in six themes related to reflective health supplies. And they had really lively discussions trying to figure out what the gaps are, what wasn't committed to yet in the official plans. And unsurprisingly, there's a lot of things that they come up with that aren't in the current plans that they consider as crucial. So, as a next step, we ask them to identify in those 10 priorities, where were they working, where is their expertise, um, what are they interested in but can't do because they don't have the necessary resources, and what is their commitment, like what can they commitment, commit to today. A lot of issues were coming up that they hadn't considered before. Um, and I think that's also a benefit that we hoped was going to transpire, but we didn't, we weren't sure whether that was going to happen. But there's a lot of really concrete activities that we can do. So we're going to try to cost them out. We're going to look at which partners were interested in taking those issues forward. Um, the coalition has a small seed funding mechanism so those organizations that need some additional money can get it from the coalition and then there's other funding opportunities like the coalition's innovation fund advanced family planning has an opportunity fund 
and for issues that we think are really crucial and we, that we cannot find the funding for within our own resources, we will help partners to get additional, additional resources from donors um, to, get, to move these things forward. You know, it's, it was very flexible. They have fixed area and then you were like pushed to move from area to another area when you can interact with people and you can deliver. So we can see that people are converging on issues. Then I have like the approach because they are coming from broader things to focus more and then to prioritize action. And this was really a smart way to do things. They should also help the ministry to develop capacities of the people, help developing the infrastructure, and also help developing quality of services to people. What we've learned in this meeting, I think will uh, put forward our work. I felt it was really important for the parliamentarians to speak for themselves and to meet the Secretariat of the RHSC. And uh, they've given in what they think is important for them to carry forward, especially on demand creation for the supplies. The youth feel embarrassed to line up for family planning services with their parents, with their relatives, and therefore they need some kind of privacy which will motivate them to access all these reproductive health services. With the RH commodities, we have a mixed picture. There are some of those which you have in good stocks, and there are some of those that are in low stocks. And not only that, at times you find commodities are stocked in the private sector and they are not they are out of stock in the public sector. We find some of these commodities like condoms, like emergency contraceptive accumulating in the hospitals, public sector facility. But when you look at the private facilities which are which generally get their products from UHMG, the stocks are low. That means that's where the uptake is and that's where we should what? Send these things, these commodities. This workshop has been timely and has been very good because this is FP 2020, but we are doing it under different uh, organizations. So we are not coordinated and everyone is doing the same thing. So there has been a lot of duplication as, f as far as following the London Summit is concerned. So it has been good that we come together, share what everyone is doing, so that we, we, we use the synergies around there and see what we can achieve at the end of the day. So coordination has been key in this meeting and I have really appreciated it.